these are flasks. If you don't it's know, all one, it's all one flask. Yeah, it's half. one flask. Each one's a half of a flask, and that's for a foundry. These are literally ordered from a foundry company. They're cast in a larger mold, so yeah. you can actually see lines. They make their own flasks from castings, just like he's casting something. Now those are blanks that he uses. Those are, um, he carved the original out of wax, and then we've cast them in rubber, and then from the rubber we've went ahead and cast them in plastic. So now he can use these for creating the regular mold. Now he's going to take some powder, and this is going to be like just a just releasing flour. agent. It's flour here, but you can use pretty much it, most anything. Now this is the standard way you do a a sand cast, and this is a sand cast. Literally, that's all we're doing is making a sand cast. So the mold itself is going to be made out of sand. You'll see as we do it. it looks like Martian sand. Yeah, it looks like Martian sand. But it has oil based in the sand, so it doesn't dry out, and it's usable over and over and over again. There's a hair on the coin. So now you got to dust it. Yeah, I know. Anything that falls on there, like the hair that was just on there, could make a mark in the coin because some of the detail is very fine when you do it with this type of sand. Oh yeah, easily like half below half a millimeter detail even. Yeah, it does very well if you spend the time to do it correctly. Used to use baby powder, but flour is cheaper and works just just as good. So, he's now just getting some sand ready. He's going to sift it on there so it doesn't uh, block up on the design. It's also so that if you just put it on as big chunks, they'll roll around and pick up the flour before it's used. But if you sift it on there as a fine powder, it doesn't pull the flour off before that. Yeah, he's done hundreds of these, so. You want to make sure there's no black bits in the sand either, or else that will leave. Black bits can be burnt sand, or it could be actual pieces of metal that have fallen, little tiny droplets of melted metal that have cooled down, and then they're, now they're in the sand. Yeah, and this is foundry sand. I think we have ordered a couple 25-pound boxes of it, or maybe a big 50-pound and then some more. It was a 50-pound. Yeah, 50 pounds. So we might have to order some more here, but... We'll just make both molds at the same time and then go to pour them. Because the, uh, that one, the, the pole has to be made in the larger box, so I'm going to have to make two molds regardless. And doing it this way, as he said, it, it doesn't clump up on top of the piece, and it literally uh, spreads it across evenly. You'll see it when we flip it over. I think everybody should understand after we get to the second half on what the, the what's going on here. If you're doing large, flat objects with no details, then you don't really have to sift it because it wouldn't matter. Yeah, he's got letters and, and things on his, so as well as the intricate design. If and he, he carved the original out of wax and then... We've cast that in plastic after making a rubber mold of it. The more time you take to do this, the better it's going to come out. is actually worn smooth from being used so much. And we just screwed this together too, the wood. That's just junk. You can see some of the tools he uses to make it. 
This probably even has some melted metal that hit it once or twice, I would gather, maybe. Oh, no, maybe not that one. We've got a couple of these giant tweezers, too. In fact, that's a small set of tweezers. Somewhere around here, there's that giant one I gave you. Don't worry about it. We'll do it another. At the end of the day, when he's done with this side, it'll be a tightly packed piece of clay in the shape of the design. You mean sand. Sand, I'm sorry. Well, it's kind of like a clay sand, I guess. Almost. I don't know exactly what this is called. It's called Petrobond, but I don't know exactly yeah, what Yeah, Petrobond is the technical name of what we ordered. And then again, the flask itself, those run about 50 some odd bucks, and then the sand is like, I don't know, 70 shipped, I think. I might try to plaster cast a flask one of these days. That'll be interesting. Well, if you can do um, cast iron, you could do your own flask. Yeah, because the new can will melt cast iron easily. Again, he's done hundreds of these just like this. It does take a little bit of time, but you're casting something out of a very hard metal that takes a thousand plus degrees to melt. Oh, a th maybe, a th maybe a thousand Celsius, but it's over two th it's two, like 2,000 Fahrenheit. 2,000 Fahrenheit to melt the copper we're going to melt. So. And if you pour, and you have to ha have it heated up above that so it has time to So flow. it's more viscous. No, so it's a lot, it's not so, it's not that it's the viscosity of the, not per se, it's that if it's only just at its melting point, once it loses a little bit of temperature, it's just going to turn solid. You have to have it, it's called superheat, I think. The temperature, the amount of temperature above its melting point that it's heated. In a minute, you'll see what's going on. As soon as he flips it over, you'll see the coin embedded in there. You'll see what the flower's for, too, in just a few more, more minutes. So here it is, flipped over, as you can see. He's going to clean this up a little bit. He's making a pour hole there at the top. Now he's adding a place to pour it so it doesn't um, touch the metal any more than it has to. Because it could fuse to the yeah. cast iron and also it'll just make heat up the mold a lot even if it doesn't and it'll take forever for it to cool down. And it doesn't need to be heated up. Yeah. Anything to save the mold and make it last longer. You can actually see it's darker around the, the pour spot from the metal hitting it and reheating it constantly. Now, if you saw the last video, this is the process you didn't get to see was him making the mold. This is the exact same thing we did in the last video, but you just didn't get to see it till now. Now, he's going to put this on there, and it's going to help separate the two halves, because once we make the mold, he has to go back in and take the plastic discs out that we cast in plastic. And where those discs are at is where the metal is going to be poured into, so... There's a point to what he's doing, that way it doesn't clump particles on it. You want just a thin, thin coat, just enough to absorb some of the oil that's in the sand so it won't stick together. I don't want you to run to the end and not get any done. Well, I'm taking as long as I need. Well, I know. It just gets dark, remember? We can't do it at night. And again, he's going ahead and just sifted some more on the top. This way, it's not going to be big clumps. It's not going to move the oh, powder yeah. around. Yeah, and see exactly what we were talking about. This is a piece of copper. The copper from him melting it before. A little tiny drop must have been on one of these flasks that he has. And that's what it is. So you got a tiny little copper coin from his melt. So we'll set that over there. No sense in wasting it. Yeah, I always remelt all those little chiplets. 
That's why you got to be careful if you're dumping something off into the sand. When we take it out of the hot uh, flask, the mold, we dump it into the sand over here. That way it's not um, touching a floor, burning up wood or anything. You'll see why it has to be so smooth on the outside in a few minutes here. I mean, it necessarily doesn't have to, but we've set it up and done it the same way forever, and this seems to work very nicely. Okay, now you can see the design on that other half, and you can see the fact that it actually, uh, the powder separated it. So if you didn't put powder on there, you just have a big chunk of sand. Tried to cut the sprue off that other copper you did yesterday? Oh yeah, it's already in the crucible, ready to go. Along with some copper from the last time that I didn't process yet. We will be firing up the kiln. And again, it doesn't take very long with this new one. It takes so much less time than the old one. The other one used to take three hours to heat up to copper temperature from nothing. And we're actually doing this on a kiln, as you can see. This is a 220 kiln right here. Um, it's a full-sized one. We have three kilns. This one takes a big old vent if we use this one for something. You can see little pieces of melted copper all over. And you can see he's just carving in some gates. Literally with just a 0.7 mil pencil. Yeah, whatever works the best doesn't matter. And it's not... I mean, you'll see some copper in there, but this is literally just to let air out. Nothing more than that. Sometimes for... it fills up everything perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those too. In fact, here's here's one that he's done before in a different metal. Bronze. It's bronze, and you can see, and he mixed up the bronze himself, but this is the sprue, so if he had it like this, it was inside the mold, and there's the gates you can see right there. So just an FYI. Now you can see a burn mark on the side from where... Yep, that might even be from yesterday. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Looks fresh. Yeah, it's just on the surface. It'll probably scrub off. Yeah, it's not gonna hurt anything. I think these are made to last for a while. Yeah, and since they were using oil-based sand, they're not gonna rust from being in the yeah, sand. Yeah, It's actually best just to leave them in the sand at the end of the day because then they're covered with oil. This is the completed one. All he has to do is take the discs out after he's pushed it all and firm packed everything in there. In fact, in a second. I've got a I've bunch seen. of little tools basically to bits of junk for doing this as well. But he doesn't want to pull them out because if you just pull them out it could mess up the design. So if you let them fall out, there's one and there's two. We'll show you the completed mold in just a second before he puts them back together. And that's the completed mold. You can see the design. So this is one half, and that's the other half. So when they're together, now you have a hollow cavity where the plastic was, and now we fill that cavity with 
copper and that's the mold. Just got a couple last minute spots to do and then it's out to turn on the kiln and we will crank it up. This is a used crucible. Is that glass in there? No, that's borax. Oh. It looks like glass because it's an amorphous solid, I think. But that's a chunk of copper in there. Underneath the borax. Yep. Now he's going to stick these together. As you saw, there's nothing. This is just sand. The casting medium itself is sand. The, the flask that the sand is in is just cast iron. The flask itself has nothing to do with it being cast. You could have just had the clay or the sand if you figured out how to do that. To make it a little easier to handle and to lock these in place, we and use the sand. So. Yeah, we use these tiles. This way, it can't blow out as well. Sometimes it could blow out and fall through the sand and make a big old hole in it. So, or it'll just open it up just yep. because the fluid pressure is so high with copper. Adds weight and, and obviously pressure. So, these are just house tiles. Nothing. They're not going to hold anything other. We need to cut them down. So next time you'll probably see them cut down. And then we use a standard, just a cheap oak aluminum clamp. It looks like it did, well, well, there are a few spots, but it just yeah, pulled off the aluminum in that You can see from yesterday, our last video, where it burned the uh, the top there. It was just from a chunk of copper. Nothing Those big. little dots there are all where the copper was yeah, starting to yeah. fuse, but luckily it wasn't hot enough to permanently Cooled off too anything. quick. The aluminum the clamp also uh, is like a insulator, so it can well, it, it helps spread out the heat. Conductor. Yeah, right. conductor. I mean, so and that's literally all there is to it. So that's the mold. It's all done. There goes the propane. Get a picture. I'll get it lit. What do you mean, get a picture? Well, it's gonna be lit. Okay. You want to close it up? I'm gonna tong out that first, the paper. Yeah, or no? Okay. I'll just move it actually to down It'll incinerate there. them. Yeah. yeah, so it's just not like There's like a pound of copper in there. You can see just chunks of junk. We're gonna crank this puppy up. Which way is up? Slide. Yep, I know. So now it's as high as it will go. So it'll take a few moments. You can just start to see the copper or the uh, heat coming off. Actually, you can just now see it's starting to flame around and turn red hot. We'll come back in a few minutes. Looks like it might be hot. turn it all the way off yet, but just in case it's not melted. You okay? Yeah, I'm just seeing if this thing's going to pull it open. Yeah, if you're ready. He's going to switch pouring. Break it just a little bit. Get it while it's still hot. Yeah, I know. Don't touch that. Pour it slow. That's it. It went dark on me again. I think. Okay. It's not going to kill. So it. it's hotter. It. Uh, well, I'm going to turn that off anyway. I thought so. See, dads are useful sometimes. It looks like it was hot enough where I had plenty of time to scrape it, which is good. Hopefully, it went all the way in because you pour it a little quick again. Yeah, I can't tell. I know, I know, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. Fused? Uh, probably not this time. It's just a lot smaller than it was the last time. It looks like there's a chunk on top. What, right there? No, no, on the side over here. Yeah, there is, but it's Plus, a lot smaller. But it's not fused, you're saying? Probably not, if the last one didn't fuse, then that definitely ain't gonna fuse. 
Let's show, see if it'll sizzle. Yep, it does. Yeah, so you can see it's still pretty hot. You can see it instantly change colors too, which is unique. Now it's still hot, even though he's dipped it in water, so I still wouldn't want to pick it up. Yeah, it's Just probably... like this is probably hot too. Yeah, I can dip that in water as well. Remember which end? Well, I'm... I just, just there you... Well, now I know which end. Yep. Just had to scrape the uh, borax off the top or else it would have went into the mold and uh, screwed up the casting. And don't forget you got to pick this stuff up today. Again, it went dark on me before I could really, before I could continue pouring because the extra temperature makes it brighter and even on the low, even on the lowest uh, sensitivity setting on that, it just goes dark. We're going to pull it off right here so you can see straight off. He brought a little container out. We don't want to lose the, the sand because you can use it over and over and over and over again. Watch out, yeah, I was gonna say there's, ooh, that one might be in a bad spot. Hopefully that didn't stick it together. Yeah, it's in the hinge, or where it connects. You'll have to pluck it off, probably. Maybe I should just get a face mask as opposed to a welding thing, but I don't know. Might need to hammer that puppy out. Oh, it's still gonna open, it looks like. Maybe Turn it sideways, you can still open, yeah. And then maybe it'll come off better that way. No. Oh, there we go. We'll see what we got. Yep, they both came out as you can see. Yeah, it was wedged between the uh, middle there. He, so he should still be able to get that off. You can see it's smoking horrendously still. Why don't you just wait till you get it in the garage? Nah, it's just... Well, then you don't have to dump the sand out in here. Looks like it's going to be able to be pulled out. Yep, there, there it goes. goes. And the metal cooled it off, off, cooled it off enough. You want me to just take garage we can scrape it off with that stuff on the inside if you want to i think that's all well you can scrape it off here well no you don't have anything to scrape it off you got the other tongs it's not going to hurt them figured we just show it here it's better for smaller casts that yeah, doesn't force all the weight down in there and you can see the gates didn't even have to be used it's just enough to let the air out is all it needed yep so the gates don't always fill in and use, but as Depends you see here... Depends on the temperature, the metal, and the flow rate, too. Yeah, and we probably let it cool down a little more than last time by yep. switching from one tong to another. And so. having to scrape off stuff. But yep. I figured it'd be hot enough to just pour straight away. Sometimes... Let's flip it over and show them the other side. I might have the tweezers out here, actually. Next time well, I'll no, you're fine. Tweezers. So it came out nice on the other side, too. Very nice details on it. Yep. All that packing paid off because there's no sand inclusions in the coin. All that's just going to brush right off. Yeah, it's just smooth. Sand can capture almost anything if you're careful. And if you have good enough sand, that play sand and kitty litter ain't going to cut yeah, this kind of stuff. That's a generic way to do it. People use play sand and kitty litter mixed together, but obviously the real stuff works the best. You going to dunk it in the water? Yeah, I think I can still do it. That one last little sizzle on the top coin, or the bottom coin, I should say. Well, that's about it, so you guys can see what's going on. Um, we'll do some more videos coming up, but I uh, hope you enjoyed it.